Some armed robberies give us a good opportunity for a counter ambush, and some don't. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. We have two videos today, one from Houston, Texas, and one from Rwanda. The Mantis Blackbeard is an innovative rapid trigger reset system for your AR-15 pattern rifle that makes your dry fire much more effective and fun using your rifle with your sights and your trigger. It integrates with the X10 and can help you improve your carbine shooting dramatically. Check it out at the link below. In this first one, you see the guy come in, chamber his gun to let everybody know he's got it and start telling the customer, now you come this way a little bit too. So now you're gonna see him point the gun at the clerk, put it under the little dish there and the clerk starts emptying out the till. So he puts the gun in his non-dominant hand, starts taking money out of the till and gets enough in his pockets that he is then going to go get back in the work van that I doubt he was actually using for work and then get in the car and drive off. The plates on it were stolen. Now this next one is from Kigali, Rwanda. And so you see the three guys on the motorcycle drive past. They're gonna actually turn back around. Of course, we don't get to see that part on camera. But now watch what happens as they, the, the rider is gonna drop off his two passengers. Now watch how kind of nonchalant they are about this. So they're gonna kind of get off and the guy on the very back is actually gonna limp around a little bit. And then you're gonna see him kind of take a button hook in and the guy that was in the middle decides to pull a firearm and announce a robbery. So now the guy that was on the back with a little bit of red, you know, hanging out from beneath his jacket is going to then just shake everybody down and take all of their stuff while the guy with the gun takes about two steps back and just sits a couple of paces back from everyone, they are going to grab everybody's stuff and then mosey out their way as well. And in the lessons today, we're going to see in each of these what is counter ambush opportunities and when is not good counter ambush opportunities. Let's think about it. Man, a lot of lessons to learn from both of these. If you wanna support the work we do here at Active Cell Protection, would you think about joining our patron member program? We have two levels, a silver level and a gold level. Gold members get to come to our monthly online seminars for free and they support the work we do here, help me pay the staff and I appreciate every one of you who supports us. In the video from Rwanda, of course, the first thing that we see here is three guys on a moto. And I know if you watch the channel for any length of time, you know that in Central and South America, in the Caribbean, if you put three guys on a moto, two guys on a moto, that is a prelude to an armed robbery, no question about it. However, that is very geographically dependent. I have been in Rwanda, and in Rwanda, three people on a moto is absolutely normal. I have seen seven people on a jury-rigged 100cc moto. It happens all the time. So knowing your pre-attack indicators means you've got to know your area because three guys rolling by on a moto just wouldn't even give you the time of day in Rwanda because it's so common. And, and, and so because of that, that's not gonna trip any wires or anything like that. Now, as we slow down here and, and kind of think about what's going on, recognize that the attacker always gets to set the time and the place of the attack. And so they are going to be the one who is on offense, which is why we call ourselves self-defenders because we're not on offense, we're on defense. Now, of course, our bad guy decides to chamber around and, and use that as announcing the attack. So, so recognize when that happens, purposeful compliance is absolutely your way. So, so one of the keys to surviving an armed robbery is utilizing purposeful compliance. Because if somebody tries to draw a gun here and defend themselves, not that that's really possible in Rwanda, but you know, given anywhere else that you are or whatever, that is going to be a gunfight that you're probably gonna have a very hard time winning. So purposeful compliance, all right, man, I'll give you what I want wherever. And also notice here that our gunman has maintained significant space. So, so nobody that's, that's being victimized here can do anything. Now, this person that's back here, which might be a kid, so I'm saying not saying that's the case, but if you're a third party person who does not have any attention on you, you might be able to launch a counter ambush in that moment. That's probably the only person who could. And of course, recognize that the person on the motorcycle is also involved, he's the, the driver. So we have a go man, we have a gun man, we have a grab man here, and this, this is a pretty well-trained crew. And when they maintain that much space, when your gunman maintains that much space, you're probably not going to be able to counter ambush him until he turns his attention away from you if you have a firearm of your own on your person. You can probably do that in that case, but if you don't and he uh, takes that much space from you, it's probably nothing you're gonna do. Compliance is probably your best strategy in that point. See if you can give him your phone, give him your wallet, give him your car keys and see if he'll go away. Now this next one, we see this same thing. If our, you know, whether it's a clerk, now if the clerk decides to try to pull a gun right here, he's gonna get shot. 
even at this point, if our bystander decides to pull a gun because of, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is that it's going to take him a second to orient on that, just a, a brief split second, this is a bad time. Instead, we use purposeful compliance to get ourselves to an advantage where we can launch a counter ambush that more effectively defends ourselves than any of these other opportunities, right? Now, I will say this, if our bystander here has a rocket fast draw to first shot, he might be able to do that, but maybe I think is a better choice in this particular instance is a little purposeful compliance, which is exactly what our bystander does. Okay, man, no problem. He starts kind of inching towards the door. Of course, guy doesn't want him to inch towards the door. And I want to think about, there's your first opportunity to counter ambush. Now, we always say on the channel, what we see is that if you have a 1.5 second draw to first shot and the guy shows you his ear, like the, the bad guy has shown uh, the bystander his ear right here, you can get a gun out in the fight and get a shot in this guy before he can do anything about it. And that's exactly what we see here time and time again. So if your draw to first shot is not 1.5 or faster, don't try it here because you see here about a second later, he turns his head back. Now, it would take our bad guy about, uh, about a half second to orient to the fact that, oh no, this guy's drawing a gun, bring the gun around and shoot would take another half second. So again, if he has a 1.5 draw to first shot, he could probably outshoot this guy. Of course, now we're in the midst of a gunfight and compliance did work in this particular case. So I'm not saying that's a bad strategy either, but I'm saying if you want to end that threat sooner, which I always think is a good idea as well, this is the way to do that. Now he's going to turn away again and turn away more significantly. So, so here though, notice what he hasn't done yet is he has not turned his shoulders and he's going to have a hard time doing that. So once he turns his shoulders to us, now we have a two second draw to first shot would actually get this guy. The other thing that I think is a big deal here is if you wait for the opportunity here that this guy shifts the gun from his dominant hand to his non-dominant hand, it's now non-deliverable. You can have even a 2.5 second draw to first shot here and you are going to beat this guy. So, so again, when you look for the right opportunity, if you're ready for that opportunity, you absolutely can. But of course, that means you have to defend yourself and you have to be good with your firearm and you have to know what your capabilities are, not guess, but you actually have trained and you know actually what your actual requirements are in the clothes you're wearing with the gun you're wearing at the time you're wearing in order to do that. Otherwise, compliance is the best uh, option, just like we see here. And thankfully, nobody was harmed in either one of these. But I think we did learn some lessons about when uh, to counter ambush and when not to as we seek to cover our ASP.